Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash in general. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello and welcome to episode 63 of the In General Podcast. My name is Jack and I'm joined with Chris. Hey man, how's it going? Good buddy, how are you? Pretty good. I'm excited about today's podcast. You know why? I'm excited as well. Go on. We have a very special guest. <laughs> Am I supposed to be introduced? Or... I, 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 no, just let I, them I, guess. Let them guess. I thought Jack and I were tag teaming that, but uh, yeah, t- t- introductions, what are those? <laughs> I thought you were doing a kind of Dora the Explorer type thing, you know, where you hold and you wait for them to... Uh, well, it's... I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's I'll just read. silence. <laughs> It is the Gaming Beaver from YouTube. It How you doing, I? man? I'm it good. Is you. I'm glad to be on here. It's awesome. Thank yeah, you yeah for no, I, no, no, no. Honestly, thank you for coming on, man. You're huge on YouTube. I'm not that big. Well, okay. To lose You're pretty small. You're pretty small. <laughs> you know. No, I mean, um, 1.4 million subscribers is what I'm looking at right now. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. That's pretty mad. Hmm. But well it deserved, is. man. 153k views on your uh, on the Jurassic World Evolution video, which is what we're going to talk about today. Awesome. That's um, exciting. It's... it's an exciting game. But first, James, we met at the Prince Charles. That's it. I mil... always forget it. I like call it Prince yeah. Albert. I'm like, no, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because you uh, we bumped into each other in the toilets, if I remember correctly. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. And- <laughs> I think it was actually. Yeah, because you were wearing a Jurassic uh, Outpost shirt. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just remember, th- I remember the whole time we were talking, I was like, I know this guy. I know his face. I know his voice. I know everything about him. But who is he? The entire yeah. time we were talking, and when you walked off, I spun around. And I was talking to um, the friend I came with, and I was like, it "Was the gaming beaver?" <laughs> oh right, because I was, was. wondering. Like, I wasn't going to go up to you, and go, "Hey, gaming beaver." <laughs> yeah, it's me, the gaming beaver. Here's my card. No, no, no. It was, it was great to meet you, man. Uh, it was one of those afterthought things. But I mean, you know, I was in a world of, I was, I just watched Jurassic Park and The Lost World. You know, yeah, my back mind to back would, at like uh, midnight. Right. How cool an event was that, man? It was a magical time. And the Lost World was so clean, the print. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It was like, I remember, because Jurassic Park was kind of ropey in, uh, in in a good way. You know, it was a 35 mil, scratchy, uh, and there were some scenes that ended too quickly, obviously, like the overcutting, there were missed frames. But yeah. Lost World was clean as, yeah, it was very clean. Uh, very clean. <laughs> I am jealous over this. I would have killed mm. to see that. No, yeah, it was great. That was the first time I saw Jurassic Park on the big screen, so it was quite a, quite a big thing for me. That's why I went down there. It was that reason alone. Yeah, because you travel quite far, right? Yeah, all the way from Newcastle. I do that a lot, apparently. I drove, <laughs> drove from Newcastle to London. <laughs> and it was worth it. It was, it was really cool that they did both those films as well. Usually it's just Jurassic Park, but throwing in Lost World is just like... Yeah. It's like a fan's dream. Yeah, yeah. I was, For me, what made I, it... Uh, Oh, sorry. Go on. No, I was just gonna say. I I was just gonna say. I'm still bummed that uh, the 20th anniversary of the Lost World didn't get like a super limited like theatrical release or something. I was kind of not holding my breath, but still optimistic. So yeah, I think there was like one theater in the U.S. that did the same sort of thing as the Prince Charles. But I mean, the U.S. is pretty big. Yeah. (laughs) At least James can travel from Newcastle to London to make this one. Ah, I could drive there. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was a really cool event actually, and uh, I it was funny because uh, Universal. I don't think they've ever, uh, other than obviously the actual theatrical release in ninety seven, um, screened the Lost World uh, non digitally. So so the original film print. I don't think that's been done really since since the release. I could be very wrong, but it's not something wow. you hear about. And this was like, yeah, they. I don't know if they cleaned up the print. Or if it was just really, really clean, but it was, uh, it was suspiciously clean. You know what I mean? There was not a scratch on it. It was, it was so good to watch. Uh-huh. Anyway, I'm going on about the three, the thirty-five mil print. Let's talk about you, James Beavers. Oh God, the gaming no. beaver. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's for people that may, for the people out there that don't know who you are, 
What are oh, you there's James? a lot of them. Don't worry. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the rundown. Uh, well, I'm a I'm 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 a regular guy, <laughs> and I go on walks on the beach. You're no, right. Uh, yeah. Like uh, I mean, I started doing uh, Let's Play about two years ago. So I'm a YouTuber. I do like dinosaur games and. Pretty, I actually I do a lot of sharks. It was one point where I was like, I've got more shark videos than I do dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but any, anything that's like animals or that that sort of way inclined, I, I'll sort of cover. Uh, I've yeah. been doing that for the past two years. So yeah, I have experienced Jurassic World the game vicariously through you. As uh, for the longest time, I just didn't have a phone that can handle it, and that just recently changed. <laughs> so I'm finally getting into it. So I got seven days. Oh, of, awesome. I got seven days of VIP free. So I just have way too much stuff for like being so low level that I can't really mm-hmm. speed up like my legendary hat. It just the whole thing's a mess. But I'm cruising through the levels right now. <laughs> yeah, it'd be really interesting because uh, I mean, when I started playing it, it was in soft launch on the Australian mm-hmm. uh, Apple Store. So loads of things have changed. Like back then, you could buy mystery packs and do all this stuff. So yeah, no, the game's changed a lot because my friend had it when it first came out. So I kind of like tried it out because I mean it was like Jurassic World, Jurassic Park Four, and they're like, what mysteries did the game have? That what what could it tell you? So there was a lot in there that was like we were really fascinated by the game when it came out, kind of hoping yeah, that it would like it, it came out before the movie. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, with the Dilophosaurus in that game, it looked just like the Hasbro toys. So everyone thought the Dilophosaurus was in the movie and it was going to sport that new look. And it was like all these mysteries were tied into the game. A lot of it ended up just being, well, they had a consistent look across the toys in the mo- uh, in the game, but it didn't have anything to do with the movie. But it was still uh-huh. really cool. And that game has just evolved so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's, it's updating all the time. Like, they added bosses in it now. I don't think we'll see any bosses in the next Jurassic World film. That would be <laughs> <laughs> big purple glowing rexes that'd be amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's like jurassic park 7 yeah. oh god <laughs> the future of jurassic is poor jurassic no, so jurassic nado so you're uh have you played through trespasser i'm pretty sure i've watched them but you you've played through trespasser right oh, yeah ages ago uh-huh. i played i played it with whitney and she hated me for it <laughs> right it. right oh my god i was just going through your channel man you've done the hunting bigfoot game was it any good uh, um uh, it, it it keeps you entertained for a little bit. It's kind of like it reminded me of um, damn it, what was that the the oh what was that the tall black figure? What was his name? Um, Slender. Yeah, that, Slender Man. It was just like Slender Man. You kind of just walk around a forest and find clues and then find it, uh-huh. right? Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It's it's really interesting. Uh, but once you find out that Bigfoot sort of he, he works on a timer. So he'll attack you once, and then he'll run away and wait, <laughs> and then he'll come back. So right. it's not really too scary because you're like, all right, you'll, you'll be c- you're coming around around about, and you can minutes. kind of assume, yeah, when he's coming. <laughs> oh man, um, it's so a game. So you played through Trespasser. What's your view on Trespasser? I liked it. I really liked the whole uh, storyline they had going, and I mean, I know it was ambitious. It like physics games, and I don't know, it had potential. Yeah, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was bad per se. I just think they tried something really different. I mean, I think nowadays to really enjoy the game, you really either have to like really be into gaming and appreciate what it was trying to do for its time, or really be into Jurassic Park. And if you're into Jurassic yeah. Park, it really it probably is like the most lore based Jurassic Park game that's ever existed, which is really funny. Like it adds so much with John Hammond's character. It adds so much history. And it's like one of those things. It like, had so I, much history to sauna. I wish the game was more popular yeah. because I wish the film. I bet you none of the filmmakers know that game exists or know that Richard Attenborough recorded all these amazing John Hammond quotes because there is yeah, so I know much. The fact that he he did it. There's so much Actually, material to pull from. Like it's so mm. fantastic. There's so much. Like those quotes could be repurposed into films, and it would just feel like new John Hammond stuff for. 99. They've done that, haven't they? Uh, I don't think they... Put... I feel like there's been trailers with John Hammond's uh, voiceover for it. Maybe fan trailers. I know that in yeah. one of the Jurassic World teasers, they had uh, Welcome to Jurassic World, and it was uh, Richard Attenborough's recording of Welcome to Jurassic Park all modified. Yeah. Oh, that really? was pretty cool. <laughs> Welcome to Jurassic World. Yeah. And in 2014, the Las Vegas Licensing Expo, they had a Behind Closed Doors uh, teaser for Jurassic uh, World. It was CG, but apparently it had like a long vo- uh, Hammond voiceover over it. Like, uh, oh, I remember that. But yeah, it, that yeah. never got that never hit online, unfortunately. It sounded really cool, even if it was like wonky early 
TZCG. Like, the whole Hammond yeah. voiceover thing just sounded perfect. It always yeah. it always bothered me that that was the kind of thing they never put on the DVD. Yeah. You know I mean? It's like a special feature. This is the development of it. The, 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 I mean, we've discussed this before, but the Jurassic World special features were so underwhelming. Oh, there was nothing on it. There was literally nothing on that Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah. Here's some behind the scenes that you've already seen on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, Trespasser, though, I really like that game. But you also played, I just saw uh, the Lost World PSX. I think I watched some of them. Uh, to help oh, me play God, it, yeah. <laughs> is, is, oh, really? Oh no, yeah. I'm. I, I, for some odd reason, I'm really good at it. I think. Yeah, I'm... you are. You're much better than me, man. <laughs> that game is hard. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the um, that and Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo. I played just so much. So much mm. time was spent on those games. They are great games. Uh, it's funny the the expanded mythology for Jurassic, the kind of franchise canon. Like you can't even call it canon. Oh, this is a touchy subject, but. The all the what you call it expanded universe, uh-huh. the games for Jurassic. Even though the quality has never been there, like with Trespasser, I love what they try and do with it, and I oh, love. I don't the, know, man. Did you, the the boob heart, the boob heart. That, that, was cute, <laughs> quality there. that is the best part of Trespasser. That her health is a tattoo on her boob. Like, <laughs> like that's just perfect, you know. Oh, I mean, man. I see what they're trying to go for. You know, you can't see. It's supposed to be like a movie because you can't see your ammo clip. You can't see. Yeah, your health yeah. Bar. In, in, Half full. This is super <laughs> random, but in the new Jumanji movie, aren't there? Isn't their health indicated by like tattoos on their arms? That, when I heard that, I immediately thought Trespasser. Oh, I've never seen that. Is no, that right? yeah, no, Where it's it? coming out. I think they they said in one of the previews like their health is indicated by tattoos on their arms. I'm like, did somebody play Trespasser before making this movie? That's pretty yeah, cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, all right. Well, let's move on from those vintage games, and let's talk about the very exciting and upcoming Jurassic World: The Evolution. The Evolution. I <laughs> <laughs> get it wrong. Let's start again. That's a title so, I should have had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Jurassic World Evolution got announced a few, maybe two, maybe a month ago. Like a month and a half ago, I think. A month and a half yeah. ago, really? and this like weekend ages. you traveled to London, James. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> Something I that you know way. very well, yeah, and you I got, got try- to see. Go ahead, you got to see it. Yeah, yeah, I traveled all the way in a Jurassic Park Ford Explorer, which was fun. That's that's cool. I, the journey was an hour delayed because I had to jump start the thing, and I was like, oh no! Ooh. And I think I fried <laughs> like some jump lead cables because they were only for like a two liter, and it's a four liter engine. Oh, uh, is anyway. it? A f- Four liter explorer, yeah. Jesus Christ, man, man. that's a guzzler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a guzzler. It's not as bad as the Wrangler. Wrangler is uh, really bad for fuel consumption, but the Ford Explorer, yeah. I guess, a four liter, it's not too bad. It depends. I guess in the UK, petrol's cheaper than what I pay here. I mean, I drive a four liter, so I'm an idiot myself, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it just guzzles it. But anyway, let's move on from that. Jurassic World Evolution. So yes, yeah. What oh, did no, you see? Wait. Well, the day before, um, like when we we got there, I saw like uh, screenshots. The screenshots of the Brachiosaurus was like over the lake and all that stuff. I was like, oh, I can't say any of this because <laughs> it's not the day. But yeah, it was great. It was great, um, sort of seeing the uh, the game. Well, I guess it's, it is kind of gameplay because it's in engine, but you, it's not. You know, you don't have the UI there. You don't actually have people clicking on things. I think if anything, that's what people were a little bit complaining about because it still felt a bit. I don't know, early. Yeah. Yeah, um, we basically saw so, animation in AI cycles for some of the animals. Yeah. Um, which so, was exciting. So, so, did you not get to play the game? No, no, they didn't actually have oh, a version there. Right. I would have loved it. I would <laughs> love it. I feel like. There's more that they've done that they're giving away. I feel like if they wanted to show in ga- like gameplay footage, they could have, but they're teasing it out at the moment. I think, and in a way, that's good because we don't want to get so much now and then kind of have nothing for six months. It's nice if they do a slow trickle because that's yeah. something they have never heard of for Jurassic Park marketing. Um, <laughs> I mean, so I th- I th- to be fair, this is going to be following the same marketing schedule as Fallen Kingdom. I mean, it comes out around the same time. The marketing starting right around the same time, like maybe a month sooner. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of already begun. Hasn't yeah, it? yeah. I mean, so Fallen Kingdom. I mean, the marketing starts next month, and this one started like a month and a half sooner than that. So it's about the yeah. same production schedule for a release, I'd say. So did you see? So tell us about the event. Did you see stuff that wasn't shown online? 
Um, no, unfortunately, no. I didn't. They had like a they had the raptors from Universal there, the statues. But no, apart from that, uh, everything that was sort of uh, broadcast, that was it. That's what was uh, on show. All right, all right. Well, it's been a great podcast, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's okay. I thought they would give you some kind of real, like, careful exclusive, you know, or something just at the booth. I assume it was like a they had like a section of space where you could go up and talk to them. And is that how it was? Uh, yeah, it was interesting because I've never been to a convention that's just one game company. Like I've been to PAX and Insomnia and things like that, or EGX sure. in the past. And there's there's loads, and they've got all the separate booths. So I was like, mm, it's just one company. How are they going to do this? But uh, it was it was very professional, very sleek. Uh, they had sort of one big uh, main stage floor, which had like a sort of photo opportunity with uh, Blue and Charlie. I think it was, it was two of the Raptors. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> um, and it was it was kind of nice because the developers were just everywhere. There wasn't like a single space where you know it was like this is where you talk to them. They were just all over the place. Yeah, so you could track them down. <clears throat> so that actually. So I know that you obviously recorded some video content, which is not out yet, and um, oh, it, it it'll be out tonight, hopefully. Oh, then everything <laughs> that we talk, listens. everything that you want to talk about, then if it's in your video, if you want to talk about it in this podcast, because they'll kind of this one will probably release after your video, anyhow. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, but yeah, what was really what was really nice. Sorry, um, was that I got to talk to. Um, Two, two people in like who are in development for Jurassic World so it was like Johnny who's like he- head of development and Nick who's the head animator um, and like they're just so passionate about this and they I think they said it or Nick said it on the um, on the live stream that you know something they're passionate about very passionate project for them but for, it's a difference between them saying it and then you sitting down and talking to them for like two hours and it coming across as genuine genuine rather than like key points you want to hit during us you know of course yeah. you're going to say like i love jurassic park if you're working on a jurassic park game that'd be really weird if you went up there and be like honestly i never thought the movie was that special but the game's fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> no, i was i was saying to johnny um i said to him you know like it, it's really nice that i've got to know you guys because this game jurassic world evolution c- could have like no effort put into it and it'll turn a profit honestly yeah um, but like even he, like he's got a degree in zoology and he's like researches all this all these sorts of things and they even had questions for Jack Horner who's like really enthusiastic to meet and oh it was just great like oh that's right they had Jack Horner there right that's yeah, cool. yeah so is he is he advising on the game um, I don't think so no um, oh. I because it was funny um, an hour before his show started. Um, I was going to the main stage to see what was going on, and I saw him, and I was like, oh, "That's Jack Horner!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I was, I walked past him, and I was like, "Oh, where's he going?" Where's, oh, and I saw he's going to like the VIP section. I was like, "All right." I like, uh, so I managed yeah, yeah. to get like talk to him candidly for like an hour, or maybe an hour and a bit. Oh, just, great! Yeah, he's, it, it, I mean that's the thing. You get Jack talking, and he's he'll, a passionate he'll, guy. He'll talk. He's a lovely, lovely guy. Oh, yeah. um, we had the option to meet him in the, at the Philly event we did. He came down for the Q and A, and he puts on a show. He, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, and I like Jack. And then when we uh, interviewed him on the podcast, remember afterwards we just ended up skyping with him for a while. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, yeah. he just he just Trying kept to talking dig. with us. <laughs> yeah, we were like, so uh, so give us the secrets, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he was a, he's a really nice guy, and it, and it, it's so it must be you you obviously felt this. You know, we grow up watching Jurassic Park, and then we we love it so much we watch the behind the scenes, and you see him consistently yeah. pop up in the documentaries. And now we're all in our twenties, and all of a sudden we're meeting him. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's, it's like crazy. Uh-huh. You're just one of the many people that like I idolize because of these movies. <laughs> it's but cool. It, we, it's funny because it got to I was like okay I'm talking to him but then it was like it's I know I want to talk to you and like somebody I've wanted to meet for a long time and I'm like what do I say <laughs> it's <just sound laughs> yeah. like a complete brain fart like <laughs> I have him in front of me now and I can't think of anything <laughs> so <laughs> dinosaurs huh <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite dinosaur Jack <laughs> no that's cool but that's great you got like proper sit down with him and have a chat yeah I know he doesn't like pickles in his burger because he picked them out oh well, that's so good to know. Jack Horner fact. That's Doesn't like pickles. Right. Does not In like pickles. All right. 
Now, now we've learned. Good, guys, go. it was a great episode. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> we've done like two fake outs already. <laughs> two, two, uh, oh, you know. It gets crazy up in here, man. Oh, yeah, you know. Uh, Welcome we to don't the take it seriously at all. <laughs> uh, no, go on. So, so, so it was a whole day, right? But were you there on the Friday and Saturday? or Yeah. Uh, well, Friday we were only there for a little bit because um, they sort of did a little tour and then we went back. Um, and then Saturday it was... I, I'm trying to get there must have been nine o'clock and it was there till 10 so they had the whole schedule all different speakers were on and then the reveals at five o'clock and then after that it was like an after party yeah the whole thing sounded really cool and i guess like afterwards is when you had the chance to sit down with some of the developers and record your content and just also talk well the night before they had like um, a ballroom well they hired out the ballroom for a, a dinner where it was just like content creators and press with the developers. So that was when I'd already talked to, well, when I did get the chance to talk to Johnny and Nick. Oh, okay. uh, Quite in detail. And then like Saturday, I got to interview Nick again. So I sort of just brought up some some things we'd already talked about just for the camera. (laughs) Um, So before we jump into maybe what you learned, what did you want to see from Jurassic World Evolution? Going into this event, what did you expect and what did you want to see from the game? I wanted to see uh, like a top-down view, UI, people clicking on things, placing dinosaurs, and this being the the finish game, <laughs> <laughs> which of course was never going to happen. Um, but uh, no, um, I mean we got to see the footage. Uh, but yeah, I I really wanted to see that gameplay. If anything, that's what I wanted to see. Would you say that? Yeah. Would you say the game's going in the direction that you hope for? I mean, given I mean it's a you know, a building simulation game, um, a park management game. So a lot of the things are pretty predictable in a sense of like what you're going to get in a very basic sense. But would you say that it's hitting like the right, uh, like it has the right kind of bells and whistles and the right hooks that you're kind of uh, hoping to hear at this point? Yeah. Um, I mean, the people working on it, I feel like they know what they're doing. I mean, They've played Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, and I don't. They've never. I don't think they brought it. Up. Yeah, I know, right? This is. It's like, well, it's kind of the same game. <laughs> like, they they've played it, and they've never brought it up publicly. I don't think. Oh, I, I mean, you guys might know. I Think uh, the Jurassic Park podcast. They did a little quick interview on their latest thing because they uh, had a Jurassic Unicast was there, and uh, yeah. they brought up Operation Genesis in their uh, interview, and they were like, you could tell the developer was familiar with it, uh, which is cool. Hmm. Yeah, I I asked the same thing as well because they they've never sort of confirmed like oh yeah we we know we're aware of that game, um, but that like because of that they know a lot of the problems that they ran into, so already they're like hopefully going to be up to a good head start and from what they know they should be able to make like a much better game. Yeah, because I, I mean I I was playing when they announced this I started playing Operation Genesis again just because I, I mean it's a great game to still play but it's it's aged you know you can still play it but it's it's lacking features and once you unlock everything and you can't dig for new dinosaurs you can't get new species your park kind of just sits there um, and I always found that was the issue with the game uh, as much as I love it but. Yeah, I, I always thought this when people say about evolution and they say already it doesn't look great it's not going to look as good as you know the teaser trailer made it out I think at the end of the day great developing company they've, they've done some really good games before that have consistent you know updates and DLCs or whatever um, a Jurassic World park builder is just why isn't there one already <laughs> yeah. yeah you know what yeah. I mean so even if this game doesn't have like a full in you know uh, you can go into your park and, and drive jeeps and stuff even if it isn't as cool as that at the end of the day it's still going to be a fantastic park builder because of yeah. the history of the company they have and such a good building uh, yeah they, exactly and already we can see that it's going to be awesome I mean just looking at that screenshot of the menu system I'm so like my childhood Jurassic fan is coming out I'm like that's what I want <laughs> we don't have this as gay we don't have this kind of content well and it's, I it, mean they're working on Planet Coaster. I mean, that's one of their games, and that's like yeah. already they've got the basics down for that. You know, well, they're yeah. already working in a very similar sort of uh, area. So all they need to do is bring a lot of that focus and onto Jurassic yeah. World, and you'll end up with like a really good game. Well, what's good? And, and it you is. Said, you said you were playing uh, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Did you play yeah, with man. mods? No, no, no. I, I play on PS2 because that's oh, how I played it when go. I was a kid. 
<laughs> the, the, the game is still updated to this day with mods, so you can have yeah. Indominus Rex, you can have so many more dinosaurs. But there is Yeah, I, I gotta do that. I gotta do that. I, I, I know that there's so many upgrades. It's like Trespasser, you know, I played that on the PC, obviously, uh -huh. and I used some of the modern, kind of cleaner mods that help it run and stuff and help it run much smoother. And it's, it is a better experience. I, I think haven't done that. I'll need to try that. Yeah, try. And there's also, I mean, I never used this, but there's also HUD. Um, a mod so you can have like um, you can see your bullet count or I don't know if it does bullet count but I think it does health and mm. I don't know if it does bullet count but yeah there's some weird mods for it but uh, yeah I think from what I've seen from Evolution so far obviously the teaser was amazing but that was all pre-rendered you know that was not gameplay this is not gameplay but it's in-game footage and the dinosaur renders are all in-game renders yes fantastic and I yeah. can't fault it and I think one, can't fault one it. of the things that I think that we can immediately pick up on is uh, in these in, in that in-game footage, the camera was right there next to the dinosaurs. Like it wasn't only above or from a distance. Like we know that we're gonna be able to get right up next to these dinosaurs. We're going to be able to see them close up, and they're detailed. There's an incredible amount of detail for this being a park management game. Like look at the amount of detail on those dinosaurs. They have scales. You know, the, there's so much texture. Uh, and uh, you know my favorite shot, Chris. Uh, which one? The one of the Triceratops and the T-Rex next to each other. It's right when they're about to fight there. Oh, oh my yeah. god, that shot. It's like the end of the Lost World, you know, the, sh the way the T-Rex is posed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, I'm so in for that. Like, that's Jurassic Park to me. Yeah, no, I mean, it just it looks incredible. Um, and, I mean, it was still just a tease, but I, it, there's a lot. I think there's a lot that we can kind of gain from both that footage and the panel. I think there's a lot that we kind of read between the lines and try to kind of get get a good idea of what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us, James, what did they tell you? <laughs> Reveal all. They <laughs> <laughs> no, they were, they were very like uh, careful with what they could say. I mean, uh, one of the guys was like, if I could tell you, I would, if it was up to me. Um, I mean, th there's so I something might be happening in March. Okay. Oh. Definitely. Is that what they said? They just said to you something may be happening in March. I said, they told me to keep my calendar open for March. Okay. So so we don't have a release date, do we? Um, summer. summer. I think that's all they've said is summer. Okay. Summer. So what could March be? Uh, that's what I'm, I'm trying to think right now. <sighs> like, what could it be in terms of uh, a game reveal? Or Doesn't Xbox sometimes have their own type of event around March? Isn't that when they announced, I... like... Was it like Project Scorpio? Wasn't it in March? It could be. It could be like a gaming convention. I don't know if like PAX East or is PAX in March. Yeah, I, we'll have to okay. look. I was almost wondering if it would like have a trailer at the Video Game Awards or something along those lines. Because I know that's mm -hmm. a big trailer reveal for uh, games that are coming out during the summer. Because E three is a bit late for that at that point. So like I was kind yeah. of looking at the big events and VGAs and uh, is it December? Or it's like the one that I can see maybe like a proper like story trailer of sorts because we're going to have the Fallen Kingdom trailer by then and I do oh, well that's November isn't it yeah. or is that the teaser oh, well a teaser and trailer is the same thing anymore like the first trailer it'll be yeah, yeah. it'll be a slight, slightly more revealing tra uh, teaser yeah I was going to say I thought a teaser too. was like a trailer for the trailer the, the whole <laughs> yeah, thing the game's changed so much now like what used to be a teaser used to be like a teaser and now like what they call a teaser is like just a first trailer yeah <laughs> it's, it's like weird, we show the man. logo with some music and that's it yeah no no we're yeah, gonna get yeah. a real trailer like the first teaser or whatever it's a real trailer so um what else did they tell you <laughs> tell us <laughs> all like, I need reveal more. all <laughs> I need more <laughs> I feel like I mean they went into the Cinco Mertes which was the five deaths yeah, like classic line by the young Vince Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. Five deaths. Yeah, I, 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 that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like maybe in some way the gameplay will be like, okay, you start on this island and then you move on to this island, and eventually we're going to work our way to. I mean, it's a bit like John Hammond. You know, he started with Isla Sauna and then moved to Isla Nublar. So we're going to see gameplay footage. It's going to be similar, different islands with different problems, and eventually maybe Nublar with the biggest of problems. Right. So one of the interesting things, I was, again, listening to the latest Jurassic Park podcast, which if you're a fan of podcasts, go ahead and listen to theirs because they're pretty cool. Um, their uh, developer interview, the, when they sat down with him, he shared some interesting details. One of the things, as he said, is the game canonically is based after the events of Jurassic World. Uh, 
and they do have human characters mm-hmm. from the movies in the game, including characters from Fallen Kingdom. Are they going to be... Do we know if that's characters like... Uh, great job, you know, like in Operation Genesis? Or... <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> like little voice quotes. <laughs> yeah, what, what's it? We were quoting them on one of the podcasts recently. Uh, what do we do here? <laughs> <laughs> I, You know, I imagine... So we'll probably have, like, Dr. Wu. We'll probably have Claire. They kept bringing up Claire a lot during the panel. Um, Ugh. Yeah, they did, yeah. Uh, her, it's, Claire, they said Claire's dream, didn't they? Yeah, but it's not her dream. It was Ms. Ronnie's yeah, dream. Ms. Ronnie. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying like she was a bad... Like, that she had, like, bad intentions, but it wasn't her dream either. It, you know, she was not... No, she was, was not job. the modern. Yeah, she was not the <laughs> modern equivalent of um, Hammond. I mean, she wasn't like Ludlow, where she was just a business person, but, like... It, it's it, universal sure as hell pushing that. It sure though, as hell man. wasn't her dream. I mean, maybe her character changes in Fallen Kingdom that we're able to see her a little bit more empathetic and a little bit more of a dreamer. But even so, in a park management game, don't don't equate Claire Deering to John Hammond. Bring in Simon Mizrani, if anything. Give us at least give us yeah, a weird yeah. eccentric dreamer of a character who just is weird as hell, and that is Simon Mizrani. I love him. So, so James, do you think it'll be some sort of you don't just build a park and that's the game. You think there'll be some sort of narrative underlying story where you, you have to start on one island and you build a park up and then you, you move to the next island? Or do you think you have freedom of choice of the five islands? Or I couldn't think that you would just stay on one island. Um, especially some of them seem a lot smaller. I think that, like, I mean, in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, you had the exercises and the missions. I feel like there might be a, like, a story version yeah well you know they 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 really alluded that there's some sort of secret with isla nublar like you know they said hey the nublar is in the game but we're not ready to talk about that yet yeah um i mean i think that's because it's got to do with fallen the movie. yeah i think you it, guys said it as well. yeah so i'm pretty sure you know as we all speculate it at this point with all the marketing materials out there it's not even speculation a volcano is going to erupt and i imagine yeah. the story of the game is you're removing assets from nublar you're protecting Nublar, maybe even managing a like a kind of Nublar in its fall, and you're setting up us either sanctuaries or alternate parks across the five deaths. And I do wonder, and I do wonder if Isla Sorna will also have maybe its own like sort of predetermined story on it as well, because I'm assuming the other four islands are mostly free of development, but Sorna and uh, Nublar are both like kind of developed islands with dinosaurs on them already. Well, they have complete freedom there, hey, because uh, we've never really explored the other islands except yeah. for Sorna. So uh, it would be really cool if Sorna. Imagine, I mean, we know it's a park builder, but imagine if they they are going to introduce some sort of uh, on the ground level you know where you can drive a jeep or control a character or something uh, i'm stretching but that would be really cool if you could explore sauna and just kind of go through the village and even stuff. if it's just to, like look through it. like a first person yeah i mean i don't I expect it i would just kind of pray it but no you but just that would want be... another trespasser game <laughs> i want trespasser i want tattoos on the boobs my friends that's what i'm here for um no but i'm thinking of, of just a way they kind of yeah, like if if you are managing stuff on Nublar, are you going to be on the ground? Well, hello there. I hear you're a fan of dinosaurs and Jurassic Park. Well, check this out. Audible has got a deal that is perfect for you. Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial for you to check out their great service. Since Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is coming out next year, why not go back and listen to the first Jurassic Park novel written by Michael Crichton on audiobook? Or, if you're interested in something brand new, why not go check out Michael Crichton's novel, Dragon Teeth? Hey, you might even be interested in something brand new, why not go check out Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg? To download your free audiobook trial today, go to audibletrial.com slash ingeneral. Again, that is audibletrial.com slash ingeneral for your free audiobook. One more time, why not? audibletrial.com slash i-n-g-e-n-e-r-a-l. Thank you, Audible. We love you. So, okay, so here's something that I think that uh, you can answer, James. Uh, the dinosaurs... Great, fire away. The dinosaurs in <laughs> Jurassic World Evolution, um, uh-huh. are they male or, or are they male and female or are they female only? Um, ah, I'm glad you asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, the interesting thing is I did I asked about genders 
Um, and I said that's something that uh, Jurassic Park has always had problems with. I mean, well, Jurassic Park did. I don't know. If, I don't think Jurassic World does have that problem uh, because uh, I got uh, Nick told me that uh, they're all female in the you know in the law. I was like, well, it's weird because Colin said that what Colin in an interview, Colin Trevorrow said, oh, there's yeah. male and females in Jurassic World. They said they just, oh, really? yeah, he said that they sterilized it, but I'm thinking Universal's like lore management team just assume they're all female and that's what they're telling all their, uh, yeah, all their partners yeah, to I go was with. Like, I was like, well, well, that was a big thing in Jurassic Park, you know, the swapping genders yeah. in a single sex environment. So, so and the thing is, if you're listening they, Frontier, we can find you that interview <laughs> with Colin Trevorrow and we can help, we, we can help you fix this canon. <laughs> and we can get our male tiger striped velociraptors. Yeah, God, <laughs> one you, one you... thing they're very um, keen on is keeping to the law, like, uh, and I think, um, I I think I must have asked uh, Jack Horner if he had anything to do with uh, Jurassic World Evolution. And at this point, the uh, the, the Jurassic law it, it's set in stone, so they can't all of a sudden have feathers. And I think they're sticking to that. So that's the other problem, though, because if Isla Sorna's in the game, there are male and female dinosaurs on Sorna. But did Jurassic Park three happen? Even with the, lo- the lost world, the lost world, even. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so-, so I mean, let's let's talk about the menu system. It has in it. I, I mean, what I'm focusing on is the archive, and we see the shot of Jurassic Park three, which I mean, a cease went nuts. <laughs> that oh, was when like a cease went abandoned, mad. Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so what's what is that archive menu about? What are we getting in there? Lord knows. <laughs> you guys are like you must have looked at that and thought wow what's that and I, I was just like dinosaurs <laughs> yeah <laughs> and sharks well, yeah sharks and dinosaurs I got one track by well you know yeah uh, archives I think what's interesting Jack is we might finally get something that we've wanted a long time which is a sense of canonical lore in the movies there are so many different dinosaurs and the thing is the movies have had trouble with um, canonical consistency. So now, like, that they're making, like, Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom, I think they're left with the tough job of tying together the weird inconsistencies, especially that Jurassic Park 3 introduced, and finding a way mm. to make it all canon. I mean, you have these different velociraptors and you have these different dinosaurs, and now it's like, well, how does that fit into the canon? Because at the time, I think they just changed the design with really no thought into it. But now it's like, okay, so that's probably a second tribe of velociraptors. And I get the feeling that, like, the lore might explain away, like, we might have a chance to read about, oh, the three different pteranodon variants, and the, you know, the two different, yeah, you know, the, the different velociraptor variants, and this and that, and I think... That that's something that needs clarification within the franchise, yeah. because when we discuss, all oh, the sauna raptors, well, which ones, the ones from Lost World or JP3, it just gets a bit confusing, yeah. and it's, it's, it'd be nice to be like, well, there are, like you said, Chris, two different tribes, it's almost, it's, that's, that's cool, yeah. that's well, really cool. going back to Trespasser, how many T-Rexes were there, were there three? <laughs> there was five. loads, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean... I, I think remember Hammond he, quotes him as like the five rulers of this land or something. Something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously that's fine because we only saw two in Lost World and that's all they chose to show us, you know. We don't need to see all five the in the movie. And third that dies in, uh, in Jurassic yeah, 3. Of course. D- just, just a side point. that could be a young... It was never confirmed. Is that one in JP3? The baby. Uh, it depends on who no, you... I don't think that it was depends on who you ask in the uh, development cycle. Some people say it was, some people say it wasn't. But it was definitely yeah. not supposed to be the male from the Lost World. It was, of course. Yeah. It's always been downplayed as like a smaller adult male. Yes, that's true. Uh-huh. Um, I, 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 it's nice to think that it's the baby from. It's Lost not World, nice, but, to but think. they give. <laughs> that's, nice, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's fixed. dies. <laughs> yeah, dies because Spino. But I mean, it's nice that if that was the callback they were doing, I guess the only way really is to ask well, Jack, uh, how about that Joe Johnson. Piece of concept art we just got from Jurassic Park three. We can't share it yet, but uh, with three Spinosaurus oh. in it. Yeah, that's pretty gorge. So oh, that's really? pretty nice. Yeah, they're all like by the uh, you know the river raft scene where they're going. Yes. To, it's that scene, but there's three Spinosaurus drinking from the water alongside the herbivores. Ooh. Which is really yeah. It makes you wonder what else Ingen was cooking up in that lab. <laughs> um, <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. But uh, so any, I mean, I think that that's one of the things though that's really interesting because with Jurassic World Evolution, we're kind of left with like, how are they gonna, you know, handle these dinosaur assets? Because like the uh, Parasaurolophus that they showed off, 
uh, you know, they're saying all the dinosaurs are females, but that is the male Parasaurolophus from Lost World. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it's so far in the distance and during uh, Jurassic World that you can't tell, if, you know, I can't really tell if there's any variations between, like, male and female in Jurassic World. I mean, you could tell the design is supposed to be the same design, but I can't tell if there's any noticeable difference on the female ones or whatnot. I, f- I feel like they're not going to introduce the whole, like, the, it's like in Zoo Tycoon you had um, animals make babies. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think they're going to do that. I did ask about... Be- um, or it's sort of like wild breeding? Yeah, uh, unauthorized breeding. Uh, unauthorized <laughs> breeding, yeah, that's right. So do you, think, do you think that they might introduce the visual male counterparts, but say that they're female and basically say Jurassic World scientists have unlocked the genome so that they can make the females look the way the males did just for variation? I think yeah, it'll be in the dig sites. I think when you unlock uh, some new uh, asset or gene, then you can change the way your dinosaur looks. But I don't think that you'll have a male and a female. Yeah, so like, what did they say about the Velociraptor on display? Because that one's curious itself. Did you talk to them about the Velociraptor? Uh, you, the one in the, um, in the trailer? In the trailer. Yeah. Yeah, um, the, yeah they said that 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 is a raptor or raptors that you've created that's not blue or charlie okay or Or delta yeah because it looks a lot like delta and that's what i was curious about but they all look the same so i'm like okay it's not delta but it's like are they saying we've never seen like a pack of wild green velociraptors we've seen two character dinosaurs two character raptors that are green and it was charlie and delta but they were characters they weren't like standard velociraptors the only yeah. standard yeah, and, they, and they were made to be green yeah the only standard velociraptors we've seen were the uh the females from jurassic park the males from the lost world and then the males and females in jurassic park 3 so seeing like a pack of what looks like delta r- running around like it just it has it leaves so many questions in my mind of like wait we've never seen you know for this movie it, i mean this game it's based off the movies but we've literally never seen that dinosaur in the movies so well, what, did, what did they say anything about customization with the dinosaurs? Did they say that you might be able to skin your raptor or give it well, like fenders I did ask and about that sweet because, exhaust and stuff? Uh, the Parasaurolophus <laughs> is um, the one from the Lost World, like you said. And I was like, yeah. well, Parasaurolophus has been in every Jurassic Park movie ever. I think, well, maybe not Jurassic... Oh, no, Jurassic World 3. Jurassic World, sorry, it was. Uh, so in each one, it's had a different skin. Uh, and I was like, I, I asked if maybe you get to choose a skin, but they just replied with the answer that is when you uh it's through the dig sites it's a customization thing okay right okay. so well, that's i guess interesting because not... because i'd imagine customizing raptors would be something they'd really want to implement i mean they had that the exhibition chris yeah you could design your own yeah raptor yeah exactly or hybrid or something i don't know i just feel like you know skinning a raptor and choosing its scales and choosing a blue stripe down the side is yeah. something they may let you do. At least that, that, that may, is logical. And then maybe in, not a, in the lore, oh, sorry, go on. in the lore, they can explain where it came from. Like this blue stripe comes from the Velociraptor blue, or like this is actually the appearance of the wild male Velociraptors on Isla Sorna, but has yeah, been yeah. genetically engineered that way, and it's still female. You know, like it might like kind of the lore book might explain it away. Like uh, we're just genetically modifying them. They're all females, but we're now borrowing these iconic looks from the movies that you love. Yeah. Because my personal thought of the Parasaurolophus is uh, in Jurassic Park, it's sort of green, but it has the same general color layout as it does in the Lost World. Like, it has the same color patterns, just a different color. So my thought was, what if the females are green and the males are sort of that orangish yellow? Um, and again, that's not really established, and then Lost World concept art kind of uh, contradicts that. So it's a little, it's, it's really hard to pull from. It's really hard to kind of figure out, like, what is the canonical lore for the looks of the dinosaurs? I uh, will uh, say, uh, sorry, do you want to go? No, on? go ahead, go ahead, um, man. I, th- I don't think that we're also going to see, um, uh, like, uh, I, th- I don't know, I was reading somewhere that it was already confirmed, but I was like, oh, well, it was news to me uh, that they're not going to make, uh, like, juveniles or elderly dinosaurs. It's just, if you make a T Rex, it's going to be, like, Rexy in a prime for all of its life. <laughs> I guess, I guess oh, that, that's interesting. That's, a, that's interesting. Interesting. I mean, they did say you do get to raise it, though, during the panel. Didn't they say something about, um, raising it from infancy you nurture it yeah before letting it out May- i think yeah that might be in the hatchery itself you might like see a little baby version of it like do a, a certain animation but that, and then it'll just all of a sudden become an adult and leave i think i think that's that's kind of happen. that's in a way mm, i guess that's fair yeah it's probably the 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 best choice but it would be cool if 
you were able to. I guess there's no breeding, but if you were able to see like two Rexes with like a juvenile, even if like they would, adopted the yeah. juvenile or something like that, it would be kind of an yeah, interesting yeah. dynamic. And like that's it'd be cool to to watch it um like unfold. Yeah, well, I was talking to the animator about all the uh, about that maybe being a case, and he was like, "Well, that would be you know twice the amount of work, like all the different animations they would have to do for like you know a baby Rex or a fair baby Rex." I, I feel like at this point, though, we kind of deserve that. <laughs> yeah, as yeah, far yeah, as yeah, games for Jurassic, <laughs> Jurassic Go, Park like... fans are starved. Like, we literally have not had yeah. like, a real game in so long. <laughs> so, like, they have to realize the expectancy on this game is like 15 years of waiting. So, like, yeah. people are but... going to want a lot from it. Going through these screens and watching the gameplay, it's early days, so you can see in the background some of the rendering isn't as high as it could be. But I'm really, really, really pleased. Like I'm, I think it looks fantastic, and they've clearly focused so much on the dinosaur movements and animation and the oh, rendering yeah. of the dinosaurs. It just, again, that shot of the Triceratops and the Rex about to fight. It's so, it's almost you could almost pull it from a movie. <laughs> they, I mean, they've got a team of 19 animators working. I think it was. Wow. I mean, it, it that's, shows. That's great. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, and I'm, do you, I wonder how many dinosaurs are going to be in the game. I imagine it's going to be a big list. Yeah, I hope James, so, too. James, do we know, like, what engine they're developing on, or...? Is it, uh, no. I guess no, it I is proprietary, because I didn't see any, um, usually if it's, like, a licensed engine, like Unreal or something, it will... Like uh, yeah, there'll be, there'll be a logo yeah, on it, so yeah. I'm guessing it's their own proprietary engine they've created for, um, all their other games. Uh, but it looks... Well, usually, so, so, if if you see that Unity logo, that means that they haven't paid to get rid of that. Fair. Oh, okay, so so technically it could be any engine. They they've just they would have obviously paid the license fee and possibly. I mean, if it's Unity, well, they paid it. <laughs> yeah. So hey, um, well, one thing that they I mean, there's so clear inspiration for Oper- Operation Genesis, but I mean, it's impossible to make a park builder and not take inspiration from Opgen because it did it so well. Yeah. One thing that I love that they've they've followed through that they've brought into this one is the sunset. <laughs> yeah. Look. Those yeah, glorious right, yeah. like the golden silhouettes. hour shots that they've got of the of the T-Rex and the it's just that's beautiful. Yeah. It, it's gorgeous. What I like is they also implied that the weather and the uh, sort of the ecosystem that you're playing in varies from island to island. Like, they kind of imply that each island offers its own sort of opportunities or challenges, which I, yeah, I, I find really that really interesting. Like, you know, are we really going to be able to visually tell the difference from island to island? Is one going to be, like, really flowery and kind of, like, the other one's going to be more, like, hazy? You know, like, I'm really curious on, like, exactly how the five deaths are going to come into play uh yeah. which is really and and what the customization will be of those islands yeah. you know will you be able to mo- like create mountains and, and kind yeah, of do well, the guard mode before you do the build mode i feel like if you were able to do that it might take away from it because I, I don't know what it is it might be isla Takano, i think it is is that one of them isla Takano, yeah yeah uh, that's there's very little land on that one so maybe you know the problem would be there is like you know no space so how do you make <laughs> yeah. a park without being able to terraform yeah right that's interesting at least and they give you those five islands to choose from and and and, it, and if it is that that they're lot landlocked and you can't do anything to the terrain that you know it may come that they also there's an option where you can just build an island and just kind of have fun what? there's like oh, almost oh, like a yeah, free that will be. yeah <laughs> that might yeah. be what isla sauna is though it could just be this is isla sauna yeah fair have fun yeah, go sauna nuts. is huge so yeah <laughs> No, but what's interesting, though, is when we realize there's these five islands, and, you know, they're talking about how everything has to be canon to the uh, the lore, but these islands, all we really know is sort of what they look like, how big, like, as in, like, from a map, but, like, we know nothing about them. We really don't know what engine has done with them, so that means that Universal now has lore about these islands, to be honest with you, and that probably means that they're going to be mentioned in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Oh, unless they've yeah. just said to the game, the game developers, you know... There's five islands. Have fun with I it. I guess, of but like... <laughs> it's just a coincidence. I don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> think so. I mean, everything about this game really seems like... I mean, when they're talking about Nublar and it's coming out with Fallen Kingdom, like it's really sounding like it's the Fallen Kingdom game. It's got the idea of building a yeah. park, but like the story and like kind of the world and events that you're playing in sort of tie into Fallen Kingdom is from best that we can tell from those very, very vague hints. Um, for sure yeah and so i mean it's gonna be really interesting to see like you know have they really expanded on the lore that much is like fallen kingdom finally gonna like embrace the idea of like a bigger world in the jurassic park universe and like really like not just like wonder what else engines up to like maybe we actually 
instead of just having throwaway lines like that, we actually get to see, like, oh, Injun has been up to other things. Like, even if, like, they mentioned, you know, a facility on uh, Isla Mantenceros or something like that, like, there, that's more than just, like, Injun's up to stuff. It's like, oh, they have a facility over here. There's dinosaurs. Yeah. Having that idea kind of expanded upon and then being able to play it in the game, that sounds really cool. Well, uh, you know, if... if... Go ahead, James. I uh, asked about um, Biosyn, if, uh, you know, they were at all involved in any of this sort of plot but uh, apparently not uh, Universal have rejected that idea yeah I oh, yeah? think yeah. I really get the feeling that for whatever reason Universal has a no Biosyn stance and I'm wondering if it's because there's a real company by that name because uh, even in those uh, old Jurassic Park John Sales scripts the company that was essentially Biosyn had a, it was like Grendel Corporation so yeah, I think yeah. that like they have don't use biosyn like a role for that. So, oh really? Yeah. Just in red. <laughs> yeah. So like. Well, I think as well it's probably got to do with the fact that there's going to be other companies coming into Jurassic World franchise. Uh, and, and they don't want to get confusing. Yeah. And they don't want to get confusing and be like, well, there's also biosyn and there's Masrani and there's Ingen and there's all these companies. There's I think they're, they're kind of or, just moving you know, away from it. Yeah. No, but I do think that like biosyn for whatever reason has been blacklisted by Universal. I'm assuming for legal reasons. Um, that's interesting. That's my only um, thought. Well, I mean, if you're if you're thinking about like what's on the other islands, Isla Muerte was the island that was in uh, that amazing fan film that I made <laughs> um, a few years ago. So you know, you made huge a film? lore there. Yeah, I made that Prime Survival fan film. How, <laughs> How old were you? And I was like fourteen, yeah. man. I was well, I was fourteen when we finished it. So is it on YouTube? It is on YouTube, my oh man. Oh my god, I'm gonna watch. Just search it. Jurassic Park fan film, and just remember, <laughs> we were kids. <laughs> but uh, no, we we set it on Muerte, and we had just some tiny like references to InGen and shacks that they built and stuff. So um, obviously, that it's not canon and it's not included. But it would be it would be very funny if there was like a similar thing on the island when you get there in this game. That would be fun. <laughs> You did That'd be it, a really cool, like little. You, 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 <laughs> just you, so you can uh, you can go. I knew it. <laughs> you established yeah, the. I knew there check. was stuff here. Um, Isla Pena, or however you say it, is the uh, really thin one. By the way. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the tiny thin one, and then which doesn't even look like it has land. It looks like sand. It just looks uh-huh. like a layer of sand in the sea. Yeah, um, one thing I didn't. Uh, see any sign of was uh, pterosaurs or uh, aquatic creatures like the mosasaur like exhibits for housing them but in the CG trailer in the CG trailer we did see the mosasaur exhibit Uh, it was in the CG trailer now that might not mean too much because I imagine Isla Nublar is pre-built yeah you're right yeah but at the same time Mm. I feel like people are going to want to create aquatic reptiles Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And they're definitely going to want to create pteranodons. So I'd be really surprised if, um, if like, aviaries and, like, lagoons to house, like, aquatic animals and flying reptiles aren't in the game. But they may still be working all that out as well. They're, they're sort of not ready to show that. They've done the land-based stuff and, they'll you know, they've got that to a place where they can show it off and everyone's happy. But yeah. they may just be still working on the water dynamics and the underwater stuff. It's complicated, stuff. though, because, like, the dinosaurs seem to be yeah. free-roaming. And then, like, how do you introduce, you know, aquatic reptiles into that concept? Because otherwise you just make, like, a little kiddie pool for them to swim around in circles and it really doesn't have that same dynamic, does it? Of it being able to, no, like, exactly. break free or, like, get into spouts with other animals it's just sort of like it's there to look cool and you don't really do it like i could see see the flying reptiles could come into the gameplay a lot more they break out they attack helicopters etc but uh mm-hmm. you know the mosasaur like it really wouldn't be able to do much would it in the grand scheme of the game not if you're yeah i guess it just swims off screen and then you get like an angry message from claire <laughs> saying it killed a <laughs> sunk a boat sunk, sunk a cruise ship <laughs> <laughs> that's a PR the nightmare last of the humpbacks <laughs> so was there anything that else that they showed you or that they had on that first day that, that hasn't made it online or that you or talked what, about or even that you asked video? reading between the lines give us your thoughts or the secrets <sighs> or just your gut feeling as far as like things that were shown that, that was everything they showed even more actually because I didn't see those uh the renders of the Parasaurolophus or the T-Rex roaring. We d- I didn't see anything like that. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, that was just on the live stream. I sort of, like, caught a glimpse before rehearsals of the uh, screenshots of the Brachiosaurus, like, drinking out of the lake where it was all cloudy. 
Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like yeah, pretty much everything was shown. Okay, all right. Because uh, for whatever reason, I I didn't really look into it too much, but I thought they would have a gameplay booth. I thought they'd be able to let people play. Oh yeah, that would be amazing. I think that's probably going to be in March though. Yeah, that's probably too early, I guess. Getting yeah. ahead of ourselves. Yeah, I mean, if you notice, like, I, if you notice some of the animation loops, like the animations were good, but you can kind of see where they looped and everything like that. Like, it still definitely had the feeling that it was early. Oh well, that's that's one of the things that they're definitely working on. Uh, they're having um, like a huge amount of like animation layers. So you've got um, you've got like an anim- animation layer for the uh, cheek jiggle or the eye blink or a, a claw twitch, wow. and they're sort of. Um, it's they're adding this sort of like randomized system so that they don't always like you know on the 24th frame it'll do that okay action. that's really so you're awesome. gonna end up with these these very unique animations and especially it's gonna with, it's gonna feel like a living world that, that yes. that's gonna be really yeah. cool you're not gonna look at a brachiosaur and then go like okay there's one step there's another step now and yeah. now it's going to eat and then it's gonna yeah. raise its yeah. head up and, and you're gonna be really curious what it's doing that's really cool yeah mm-hmm. especially um they were working quite hard on the um sort of the foot placement like placing the foot with an IK yeah. system it's like inverse kinetics or something like that uh, so when a brachiosaur or you know a certain dinosaur when it goes up a cliff it doesn't seem like it's just going to topple over you know what I mean like it's all it's all, it's totally going yeah yeah there's like a balancing physics yeah, system yeah. Uh-huh. so they're, they're that's working really on cool really realistic yeah and obviously Operation Genesis was was so long ago so there was limited stuff they could do but the one thing that bothered me now is the amount of I mean the the limited amount of terraining you can do and like I like the idea that in the enclosures you know there's like a little mountain there's raises there's valleys you can't mm. really do that in Operation Genesis and you can't really add too many too much foliage yes I'd love to be able to create like whole streams of forests like a network of forests in an enclosure mm. and just see what the dinosaurs do at least in these trailers in the gameplay in the in-game footage we're seeing dinosaurs in enclosures together so yeah. triceratops and a rex and, and velociraptors and, and parasaurs like it's really interesting like yeah. we saw the raptors so, hunting like, yeah and is yeah. that just something that they let you do in the park or is that like mission I stuff think, you know, i think that's, that was those just the... showing you what what, what can happen i think yeah like yeah, yeah. but like that's was... really cool like mixing mixing the paddocks of, of of at least herbivores in in operation genesis gave you huge points you know mm-hmm. when you especially when you take a photo and you've got like 10 different species in there but um yeah mixing like having like huge paddocks with a triceratops one end and a rex the other that's that's an interesting dynamic and a forest between them or you know what i mean uh-huh break it up so I always they thought that was a bad thing though because if like a dinosaur dies you get like bad press it's like oh could you let this in <laughs> yeah animals have rights no I don't <laughs> oh, man. But, it, but then it's, it plays on that whole the thrill seekers thing right I think oh, I swear yeah, really. like in Operation Genesis some people wanted to see yeah. that oh, some it, of the audience just like members, in real so. life <laughs> <laughs> yeah some people want to see a velociraptor chew up some triceratops but if, if some people complain about it you show them that awesome photo you took from the balloon that's yeah. right yeah look at these points <laughs> now I oh that was one thing that they said right now they said as of right now they don't have a photo mode oh right okay um, that was something that like was in the Jurassic Park podcast but I hope that maybe maybe there will still be like maybe there's not like a free roam photo mode but it would still be really cool if like there's like mission types of photos like from the bl- balloon or whatever yeah. I love that idea. Oh, no. Well, I mean, looking at the game so far, it looks great. So that's something mm. you'd want to do anyway. Yeah, exactly. You'd want to just it, like freeze time and just go around. And take... Yeah. Um, now, what's interesting about that whole thrill seeker thing is we don't really know exactly how guests are going to play into the park, but we do know the three tiers of like mission structures and um, I guess like people of power in the park. You know, you have the entertainment, security, mm. and uh, science. Oh, the contract. Yeah, the contractors. Now, yeah, yeah. I mean, so entertainment, it's probably going to be Claire, because they kept talking about Claire. Uh, security <laughs> will be a Hoskins replacement. I'm guessing whomever security is, is a uh, is a Fallen Kingdom character. And maybe science is Dr. Wu. Hmm. Um, but he buggered off, though. Yeah, but in this game, he's probably back. <laughs> They're probably all working <laughs> together in this, but also working against one another. Who knows? 
Um, uh-huh. But they implied that uh, the, those mission structures also have to do with, like, the... You can, you know, they've said you can edit the genetics of the dinosaurs to vary how they look. And I'm wondering yeah. if this also sort of entertainments about hitting, like, that classic Jurassic Park look. Security is all about making them scarier and meaner, meaner like the Indominus yeah. Rex. And maybe science is, like, letting them be like a little bit more true to real- realism or true to science like maybe science velociraptors would be like Jurassic Park 3 velociraptors or maybe I mean I, I, I don't know I'm just trying to figure out like exactly what that all means like it, there's a lot of interesting opportunity there and I'm very curious exactly on how it's going to play out mm-hmm. I, yeah I, I think I know something about uh like if you it's, it's a common knowledge I think just as a, a general but uh, if you don't upgrade your security, you know the dinosaurs will break out, and you've got to keep up with whatever dinosaurs are in your park. That's... Yeah, and I, and they made it seem like they said on the live stream, it's all to do with. Uh, I mean, I'm sure we've talked about this, but the three elements. You're kind of one benefit from one pulls away from the other, and you kind of have to find your balance. And, yeah, you know, more security means this and that, but you're lacking in the other features. I think that's a really yeah. interesting dynamic because no one's going to have the same park. Exactly. Well, he said like something like, if you want a scarier T Rex you better have the facilities to house it like this or else you know you're going to have problems and like even right there yeah. saying the option of making a scarier T-Rex well, what does that mean like are they talking hybrids or are they just talking you know you kind of beef it up you make it a little meaner looking like I, i'm very curious i mean cuz we've seen it, it'll... the T-Rex render that they showed and then the T-Rex in the trailer they're slightly different actually yeah. Uh, they, they have different it, it'll textures. It'll be a physical appearance. I don't think they're going to make um, like custom hybrids. That's what everybody wants. They want to make their own custom well, hybrids, but I don't think that's going to be a case. I, I don't I'm want I'm sure that. the Indominus Rex <laughs> will be in the game, and I'm sure the Indoraptor will be in the game. But beyond, oh, yeah. but yeah, beyond sure. that, I, I don't know. I, I really... <laughs> I think they're going to leave the crazy hybrids to Ludia. For entertainment, I'm sure that there must be like end goals. So if you follow this tree all the way to the end, then maybe you unlock the Indominus. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it could be something like that. Or, I mean, do you think they'll be the kind of thing you know, like showcase? I mean, I keep going back to it, but Triceratops versus T Rex, and you win this. Yeah, you know what I, I mean, I think, have the have that battle, and I think they want you to uh, like sort of focus on the contractors in a way where. You know, they want some things from you, and you get things from them in return. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. I mean, with Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, it was sort of like, ah, you can do whatever you want. Whereas I think in this yeah. case, they're probably it's probably going to be like, okay, I don't have any sort of resources. I'm going to have to, you know, fulfill this guy's whatever. Of he course, wants. Yeah. yeah. It's just I do hope they don't kind of. I hope you you at least start with a bulk load of cash to lay the groundwork, like like in Sim City and like mm-hmm. in those kind of games. Because if you really do start from nothing, you're you spend months kind of developing a park that you're not happy with. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I, mean? I don't think it'll... But I'm sure they're going to work that out. So it's it's an XP system, right? Yeah. It uses XP to... Yeah, to in the screenshot we can your see your point it. system, yeah. But I don't think they're going to make resource management that difficult. Like, it's not like, you know, it's not a free-to-play game where they want you to spend, like, real money to, like, get more points. <laughs> so, like... Get I, gems! <laughs> so, yeah. I don't think, like, they're... I don't think it's gonna be... It's gonna be, like, you're gonna progress through the story. Like, if you want to sit down and play Jurassic Evolu- Jurassic World Evolution for a day, like, you get it. They're not gonna have it, like, we're two hours in, you're like, well, there's nothing for me to do. I just need to turn off, you know, leave the game running for two hours to get resources. Like, no, it's not gonna have anything like that. Like, it's gonna keep... It's gonna yeah. keep the content coming pretty progressively. You, um, you don't think there'll be microtransactions? I'm sure there will no, be. This is what I was going to ask you. There'll probably be downloadable yeah, somebody... content, but I don't think it'll be like resource no. microtransactions. They, but that's the thing. Microtransactions are just... Uh, it's, no one wants that in this game. I know. Not at all. Uh-huh. You know, Ludia do it with their freaking stupid iPhone <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want it. I don't want it on this game. I want to buy this game and play it damn right. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, and you, I, I think it's it's a sort of like a triple A sort of style game, and yeah. you, what you pay is that's it. Yeah, so. if you want, yeah, as well. I don't want to have to be online to play it. You know, I don't want to have to log into the internet to to play this game. If I want to play it offline, I'll play it offline. Well, I, Leave me alone. Just stop asking me questions. All imagine right. Imagine like a six dollar uh, DLC where it's a skin pack and it reskins all the like all the buildings like oh Jurassic Park to Jurassic, skin pack. like Jurassic Park or something like that so like the <laughs> buildings no longer look like Jurassic World buildings now they all sort of have that tiki safari style of Jurassic Park like I would 
love that. Don't, you're giving them ideas. I would love that. I would <laughs> Yeah, for Chris, that. no, it should all be free. It should be included. <laughs> uh, this is this is one thing we spoke of, though, when it first got announced. We did that, the podcast, Chris. I, I remember saying, like, imagine if you could fine-tune the details of each building and choose the wall style, like, kind of like in The Sims. Like, like, uh, yeah, oh, no, yeah, really I'm cool. sure that's going to be a thing, because Planet Coaster, you can do that. That's what I thought. I remember watching a, a reveal of Planet Coaster and people, all the comments were like, yeah, you can literally change windows and stuff um, on the buildings. And that's kind of the customization that would make this game ideal because, yeah, you could have a Jurassic Park park. You could have a Jurassic World style park. Yeah, and like, I think... That's exciting. I find like a lot of the buildings in Jurassic World, they're kind of like run of the mill. You know what I mean? Like there's a few things that indicate that they're unique, but otherwise they just kind of feel like any boardwalk or whatever at like any theme park yeah. across the world. Jurassic Park, yeah. it looked unique. Like you saw Jurassic Park and like, man, those buildings had a unique style to it. So I would love to play this game and be able to customize my buildings to look a little bit more Jurassic Parky. Um, mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Like I would just love to be able to build a park that's sort of reminiscent to towards that adventure safari feel with maybe some higher tech feeling, but like give me that customization option. That, I mean, that would just be yeah, really, really I, I cool. I don't even think you need to ask for it. I think that's already going to be there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, and I imagine, like, in the future, they might... I mean, hell, it'd be really cool if they did have, like, a whole Ice Age expansion pack, but, like, it adds new story missions and new animals and, you know, maybe a new island, a new biome, something but like that. But that would probably cost money. That would cost money, but, I mean, if we... <laughs> yeah, stop it, Chris. But I don't <laughs> mind proper DLC. What I don't want to have to do is spend this amount of money for this Ice Age animal, but this amount of money for these buildings and this amount of money for this island. I just want a proper DLC package. It gives you the story and all the content all in one for like 10 bucks and you get a whole expansion. Yeah, that, like proper I think that's, DLC. that's how gaming should not, be. But not it, a it, microtransaction. It is, <laughs> do we know what they do with Planet Coaster? Uh, free um, updates it and was, DLC, I, I think. Yeah. It updates okay, so there's, there's no microtransactions in that. You're not pumping out your credit card for to buy a certain type of seat for your roller coaster, right? No, it's it's DLC. Fantastic. And they gave okay, a lot cool. of it away for free. Yeah. Well, I, I I do have high hopes for this game. The developers seem like they really do care. And they seem like, you know, they've got a good catalogue of games that they've made already. And this is looking fantastic. Yeah. I, no, I'm, I'm really like, excited. After visiting, I'm quite happy with uh, what what people are left with it. I, I definitely yeah. work on it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I can't wait to see more. I really hope that... Uh, probably not a trailer but i mean at the very least even if after jurassic world fallen kingdom the trailer comes out it'd be really cool if they put out a screenshot with like whatever new dinosaurs they show off in the trailer it'd be really cool just to see a screenshot from the game and like there's that new dinosaur you saw in the trailer like there's this there's yeah. the stigamolic like give, give give it to me like i want that <laughs> Did, didn't they uh say oh, i think i read somewhere that the cancelled game i don't know what it, what that was called oh, the Jurassic survivor. survivor yeah wasn't that bought or when the models transferred into like this one? Oh, i don't know i haven't heard that did they say something about that at the event i i think that's something i read myself but if that's the case then we can see like you know a lot of jurassic world dinosaurs coming back like succamimus yeah, and dilophosaurus yeah i mean i think that like my general presumption is if you've seen the dinosaur in jurassic park Jurassic World or Fallen Kingdom, it's definitely 100% going to be in the game. So I have no doubt that Lophosaurus is going to be in the game. Gallimimus will be in the game. Um, and uh, what are some of the dinosaurs that are in Jurassic World? Pteranodon, Dimorphodon, Pachycephalosaurus. Um, I like how you guys uh, spotted the Camarasaurus. <laughs> yeah. That's all Chris, man. That's all Chris. That one, uh, that, well, I saw the trailer and I'm like, wait, what was that dinosaur? And then I was writing the article, and I'm like, okay, wait, I need to figure that out. So I was talking to some people, and I'm like, that was a Camarasaurus, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, what, what was the time, time stamp on the trailer again? Because I was trying to write the article and also pull from this, and it was so difficult. Uh -huh. And uh, at first I got really crappy screenshots of it, but then they uh, uploaded a slightly higher like bitrate version of the trailer, and I was able to pull slightly better screenshots of it. What's interesting is the official screenshot they put out of the herd. They have the Camarasaurus cut out of it. Like, it's basically the same frame of the trailer, but somehow the Camarasaurus isn't standing in there. So I don't know if they're like, nobody will notice. They'll think it's a small Brachiosaurus. Uh, or it just wasn't ready at the time, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? But it was a kind of a neat little treat because, like, everything that we've seen are from the movies. In fact, all of them are basically from Jurassic World, minus the Brachiosaurus, mm -hmm. uh, and then the Camarasaurus. Yeah. Well, Camarasaurus was an Operation Genesis, yeah. I suppose. 
I mean, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. That goes to show you, hey, they're going to have, there's our proof. I mean, I think we could already assume it, but uh, there's our proof that there's going to be dinosaurs that aren't in the movies. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be a lot of fun as well, just getting a lot of those weird dinosaurs um, that maybe you don't normally hear of. Like, you know, maybe we'll get weird things like Mosiachosaurus or... Um... Archaeornithomimus. <laughs> yeah, or like even <laughs> like the weird, like, or hell, Microraptor. Archaeopteryx. Oh, that has feathers, though. Yeah, see, I'm very curious on, like, if they're going to handle... Because we know Universal isn't opposed to feathers entirely, because they let Ludia do it, like, a lot. Yeah, I suppose. You had Utaranus. That was a very feathery... Uh, yeah, and, like, you know, the Utah Raptor evolutions are feathered. A lot of the uh, evolutions on that game all have, like, feathers. Um, I don't think you will see... Yeah, I, I, it's a case if it's not in the movies. Yeah. Then I think it's it's fair game. Which is cool. I think that that's fun, like, in a game like this. Like, if you could find a way to blend feathers into the Jurassic Park art style, and so if you have a Therizinosaurus or something along those lines, like, make it look, oh. make it look feathered oh, and that's, cool. Oh, that's the hottest new one, Therizinosaurus. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's such a weird-looking dinosaur, man. Uh-huh. Um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like when Spinosaurus was first in Jurassic Park 3 it was like oh yeah I love Spinosaurus and I feel like now the hot dinosaur is Therizinosaurus <laughs> yeah it like. has been kind of it suddenly became popular and I'm not really sure why because I can't think of any like pop any any, any uh, pop culture that's helping push it right now yeah the first time I saw it was Nigel Marvin what a bloke <laughs> oh prehistoric pop <laughs> yeah. it was more with dinosaur specials first <laughs> yeah, what was it? Uh, Ni- what was his name? Nigel... Nigel... Nigel Marvin. Marvin. Marvin, yeah. That was it. Jesus, man. <laughs> That's like... You know what other... Throwing back. What other dinosaur is really big now <laughs> is uh, Pachyrhinosaurus. Which, that one happens to be my favorite dinosaur, mm. by the way. Oh, really? I never would have guessed, Chris. <laughs> I never <laughs> but uh, that, that's a big dinosaur anymore. I feel like that's like in every toy line and all over the place. Um, but yeah, like I would, I want to see dinosaurs like that in the game as well. You know, these sort of more exotic variants and uh, just... Oh, don't worry. It'll only cost you like a fiver. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, James, tell us what is your most exciting takeaway from the event you... Uh, you attended this weekend what's the what's the one thing you came away from it thinking um the admission from jack horner that spinosaurus could not kill a t-rex yes <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh Aziz. that's great <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> yep. man jp3 is great i love that movie <laughs> i know you do <laughs> <laughs> but no i think uh jurassic world evolution is is something we've all been really like hoping and waiting for especially when jurassic world was announced to be a park a new park and everything it, it just made sense. made sense for there to be oh, a park builder did they happen to say how long they're developing this game for when you talk to them um not that i can think off the top of my head okay the one interview with jurassic park podcast it seemed to imply nine months uh so far so far yeah mm-hmm. maybe that's when the guy maybe that's just first. when the guy started though um who knows? Yeah, that's something I've been trying to get a feel for. Is like, how long has this been in development? Because I almost feel like if it's only been nine months, there had to have been other attempts by other studios that just fell through, just the way yeah. Jurassic World Survivor fell through. I, I don't know what was going mm-hmm. on with the games there, because, I mean, as of less than a year ago, they trademarked and bought domains for Jurassic World Survivor, and then I guess it died again. Oh, there's, there's been plenty of, like, indie games came out, uh, like, trying to make, you know, park builder simulator with dinosaurs yeah I, I'm glad we're getting a, like a, tri, you know triple A game coming out and yeah. well finally yeah uh-huh. well I think um, what was it Johnny said he says they're not like a triple A they're like a triple I it's like they're independent but they have the resources yeah they need. but that's kind of where the better games come from these days yeah it, oh, or yeah, a lot yeah. of the most mm-hmm. more unique games you know a lot of independent developers get get picked up by a studio and i think yeah universal have done the right thing because these guys seem to really have a hold on yeah it. they went to a really Jurassic good... world the evolution is is sorry oh, i said this went to a really good studio for this like yeah yeah and they, like you said they're all passionate they all seem to really love it yeah so do. summer 2018 is when this is going to come out probably alongside Jurassic world fallen kingdom probably a week or two before 
Actually, that's an it's interesting be one. Before Will it be or before? After? <laughs> Maybe yeah, the week yeah. of. The week of, I reckon, yeah. Because it's going to reveal some stuff about the movie, yeah. as you yeah. know, about Isla Nublar. And... But yeah, very exciting. James, um, any further thoughts on this game? Uh, de- it's going to be definitely one to wait for. Like, if, if there's any Jurassic Park game that is going to be doing it justice, or the, the, what could be the best Jurassic uh, franchise game, it's definitely a high chance of being this one. Yeah I, yeah, I really do think this will be, like, the best Jurassic game to date. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to give us a lot to do, and a, a, lot, a <laughs> lot to explore, and a lot, a lot to, to dig do. into. I'm really looking forward We're to it. We're not going to be bored from now we'll on. Actually have, we can actually write a video game review for the website, Jack. Wow, imagine like an actual that. real video game. You, you didn't do one on Jurassic World, the game? <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Man, I threw my account away and got rid of it. Oh, man. <laughs> God, I hate that game. But yeah, so um, that's exciting. James, thank you so much for coming on, man. No, it's been thank great you for having to, uh, me. Yeah, no, no, honestly, thank you. You've got more subscribers no, than us, you. so thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, it's been really great to speak to you, man. And um, if there's another London event, which I'm sure there will be, I'll, uh, I'll try and make it across and be good to meet up with you and... Oh Grab, yeah, you like can go for a ride in the uh, Explorer. Ooh. Oh, oh man. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> it's definitely happening now. <laughs> Come on, Frontier, get on that. Have another event. It's been two. It's been, it's only been a week. Is it? Was it Monday? No, it's Monday <laughs> today. It's only been like two days. Oh man. Yeah. Exciting times. But uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, no uh, problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right. Well, that has been episode sixty-three. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. James, where can people access you? Uh, where can people get you? Where they can get me? Uh, well, my home address is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, if you type in Gaming Beaver into YouTube, you should be able to find me. And go ahead and... I think there was only a brief period at the start where other channels would sort of come up before me. I was like, I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only beaver. Uh... Um yeah, I think it's your channel's the Gaming Beaver, but your channel, you, like, URL, URL is, is a Gaming, a gaming Beaver. Yeah, and you couldn't put, get it. You put couldn't out a lot it. of content, so there's going to be a lot there, especially, you know, we've got mainly Jurassic Park fans listening to us, but, uh, yeah, there, there's content yeah. there, so go ahead, check, subscribe, right. watch, like, give him your love, and he'll, yep. give, you his, and he'll yeah. give you his love Send in money, the form of videos. Donate. <laughs> 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 yeah. Donate and get involved. But no, seriously. And uh, James, hit us up if you ever do a Trespasser replay because uh, Chris needs to experience that game like a true fan. I've played oh, it. Wow. I, Jack, I modded that game. Chris, you don't like that I, game. No, though. I do like it. I just You told me you don't like I that told game. You the game isn't very good, but I love it. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> it's amazing. It enough. The game is very yeah. ambitious. It's just very broken, but I do love it. <laughs> Rocks. You can pick up rocks and throw them <laughs> with your weird yeah, janky of, arm as lucky. you swing plywood at dinosaurs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and steel beams. Like uh, oh, uh, the physics of that oh game. But God, yeah, beautiful. anyway, I think the takeaway from this podcast is we all need to get heart-shaped tattoos on our breasts. Uh, and uh, let's do it. Go from there. Let's really, do it. let's do it. Yep, I'll all do right. it. <laughs> Great to speak to you guys. All right, all right take care. See you.